Well, folks, one person is angry above all at Republicans launching an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden. And that person is the great legal scholar, AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Now she has her lines to read and she reads them with passion and lots of hand motions. She says the Biden impeachment inquiry is an exercise in futility. I'm, I'm certainly glad that someone informed her what that what that phrase means. Their own that, witness, the their OC. own <laughs> Republican witness said that there are, from what he has seen, there are not grounds for an impeachment inquiry or rather, frankly, impeachment in general uh, of President Biden. But that has not deterred the Republican side from continuing to try to uh, force through a completely groundless and unsubstantiated I won't even call it an investigation. I'll just call it an exercise in futility. Wow, she's, she's very upset and she's a very serious legal scholar. Wow, I, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. She, it would only be better if she were wearing her smart people glasses that she sometimes puts on in committee hearings to look like not an idiot. Let us talk about diversifying your savings with physical precious metals these days. So the Federal Reserve has now decided that they are not going to raise the interest rates anymore. And now they're talking about lowering the interest rates as of next year at least three times. Well, you know, is that going to inflate the currency again? Fair bet that it might. Birch Gold Group's most popular special of the year is on right now through December 22nd. For every five grand you spend with Birch Gold, they'll send you a one ounce silver eagle for free. Text Ben to 989898 and claim your eligibility now. You can purchase gold and silver, have it shipped directly to your home, or have Birch Gold's precious metal specialist help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold for no money out of pocket. And they'll send you free silver for every five grand you purchase. Keep it for yourself or give some, something with real value as a stocking stuffer this year. Just text keyword Ben to 989898 and claim your eligibility today. Birch Gold, they're the people I trust to buy gold from. With an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers. Now is the best time to buy gold from Birch Gold. Text Ben to 989898. Claim your eligibility for free silver on qualifying purchases before December 22nd. Text Ben to 989898. Are you still searching for the perfect gift? There's still time to buy the best holiday gift ever with Legacy Box. This is a meaningful, awesome gift. Legacy Box is the simple, safe way to reclaim all that priceless family footage you haven't seen in years. Legacy Box preserves your family's recorded moments digitally, ensuring their safety forever. By going to LegacyBox.com slash Shapiro, you can get your family's videotapes converted for just nine bucks and photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents each. I've done it myself. I've done it for my parents. I've done it for my in-laws. I've done it for myself. You can go out to the garage. You're gonna see a bunch of old film reels. Do you have a film projector? You're gonna see a bunch of VHS tapes. You got a VCR in the house, do you? If not, why not get that stuff transferred to a format you can actually use? The process is easy. You send in your legacy box filled with all that stuff, and their team digitizes everything by hand right here in the United States. You'll get it back on the cloud or thumb drive along with your originals. Legacy Box digitizes over 15 types of analog media, whether it's VHS, super 8 millimeter film reels, photo negatives, they've got you covered. Make this holiday season special. Give the gift of memories Legacy Box. It's one of the few products that are in stock and ready to ship. Get your family's videotapes converted for just nine bucks. Photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents each during this exclusive. Last minute holiday offer from Legacy Box. Go to LegacyBox.com slash Shapiro. That's LegacyBox.com slash Shapiro. Meanwhile, Representative Dan Goldman, he's doing the same routine. They just don't have the facts. They don't have the facts. I don't know uh, why they decided to do a joint appearance, Dan Goldman and Jared Moskowitz on MSNBC. Um, but this looks like an outtake from uh, from Waiting for Godot, but like a really bad production. I, I mean, <laughs> this is really weird casting. Here we go. This is a bogus sham impeachment with no evidence whatsoever. And the notion that like they Penn need and over to here. move forward for some sort of procedural reason is completely bunk. The Biden administration has been way more cooperative than they need to be and certainly far more cooperative than Donald Trump was when he provided zero documents to the congressional impeachment inquiry in 2019. The administration has provided witnesses, uh, 100,000 and more documents. Documents. The problem here is not that they don't have a, the materials. The problem here is that they don't have any facts to support their allegations of any wrongdoing by President Biden. Remember, Dan Goldman was one of the lead lawyers in the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump. Turnabout is fair play. Democrats, naturally, are now suggesting that any attempt to impeach Biden is insurrectiony. It's an insurrection. So what was it when you did it twice with, with Donald Trump and claimed that he was a tool of the Russians? Here was Representative Jim McGovern of Massachusetts doing this routine. This inquiry has nothing to do with Joe Biden. It's about the Republican Party and how radicalized and extreme they've become. They are allergic to truth and transparency. Republicans say this is not about a preordained outcome. It is. 
They are going to try to impeach President Biden despite the fact that there's no evidence against him at all. Trump sent a violent MAGA mob here to the Capitol to reverse the election results and certify that he won even though he lost. What they couldn't do on January 6, they want to do with this extreme political stunt. They have contempt for our democracy. They want to finish the job. They have contempt for the democracy because they want to impeachment inquiry into, I mean, that's part of the actual system. It's part of the actual system. Again, Democrats used it twice. Meanwhile, Representative Jasmine Crockett of Texas, Democrat, she's going even further. She says Republicans are domestic enemies. And if you launch an impeachment inquiry into the president, you're a domestic enemy. I wonder what that, what does that mean when Democrats do it to Trump twice? And right now we know that they are continually trying to tear us down from within. When we swore our oath, we swore our oath to protect against enemies, foreign and domestic. And let me tell you something. Those of us that serve on oversight, especially those of us that are specifically Democrats, I feel like we are constantly fighting domestic enemies and no one should feel that way. The American people should be outraged right now. Outraged. Domestic enemies. Anybody who opposes them is a traitor. They're traitors. We're going to fight tyranny by calling all of our opponents traitors and domestic enemies. That's going to go amazingly well. Jack Smith is doing whatever he can to get Donald Trump arrested and put in jail before the election. Jason Willick has a really good piece over at the Washington Post about this. He says, there are real legal problems with special counsel Jack Smith's election interference case against Donald Trump. The former president's effort to overturn the 2020 election was despicable, but political lying isn't generally a crime. Smith's case thus must rely on some of the vaguest laws in the federal penal code applying them in untested ways. But let's say you disagree. You think Trump's post-election behavior was clearly criminal and President Biden's DOJ had no choice as a matter of law but to indict him for it. Two recent developments in the case should nonetheless undermine the fiction that Smith is an apolitical prosecutor. Smith sought a pretrial gag order against Trump that would have limited so much of the candidate's political speech that it had to be successively narrowed by two courts. Now, in a filing at the Supreme Court, Smith has all but announced that his prosecutorial timeline is controlled by the 2024 general election where Trump is likely to be a candidate. Start with the gag order litigation. In September, Smith asked for startling restrictions on Trump's right to object to his own prosecution. He demanded that Trump be barred from disparaging and inflammatory statements about Smith or the judicial system. Most astonishing, the special counsel suggested Trump should be barred from blaming Biden for the prosecution, essentially muzzling a major line of criticism against the administration Trump wants to unseat. Judge Tanya Chutkan, appointed by Obama, clearly leans toward the prosecution in this case, but the gag order was significantly narrow than the one Smith sought. Then, Last Friday, a three-judge appellate panel composed entirely of Obama and Biden appointees had to even narrow that gag order. Again, what Smith wanted was a dramatic violation of free speech principles against Donald Trump. But that brings us to point number two, which is the fast track. So Smith filed a motion on Monday to bypass the normal appellate process and fast track the Trump trial based on what can only be described as a political timetable, says Willick. Trump claims he has immunity from prosecution because he was performing official presidential duties when he tried to overturn the 2020 election and because the Senate acquitted him in his 2021 impeachment trial. The claims are likely wrong, but they do raise novel legal issues. But the problem for Smith is that the trial can't be completed until you actually solve the issues. Chudkin denied Trump's immunity claims. Trump has now appealed to the D.C. Circuit, but Smith is going directly to the Supreme Court. Why exactly is he doing that? What is the compelling reason that this thing has to be done right this very instant? Here is what Smith says, quote, Vindicating the public interest in this case requires immediate resolution of the immunity question to permit the trial to occur on an appropriate timetable. If appellate review of the decision below were to proceed through the ordinary process in the Court of Appeals, the pace of review may not result in a final decision for many months. Even if the decision arrives sooner, the timing of such a decision might prevent this court from hearing and deciding the case this term. So as Willick points out, the argument is totally circular. At no point does Smith explain why this thing has to be decided right now. Who cares? Who cares? Let's say it goes to the appellate court and let's say it takes months. Then let's say it goes to the Supreme Court and takes months. And now it's 2025. What is Smith's big rush? Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 